Hey folks, uh, welcome back to the Ash Ignition Videos channel on Blip TV or YouTube, depending on where you're watching this. And welcome back to the show, and welcome to another one of my Let's Plays. And this is Super Mario Brothers 1 on the Super Nintendo as a part of the Super Mario All-Stars compilation. Now, uh, I'd like to explain a few things about this Let's Play before I let you watch the video. Uh, what you see in front of you is the genuine article, so nothing is emulated, on, no PC emulators were used. This video was created with the original Super Nintendo, with the original controller and uh, original, uh, original game, of course. Um, it's a live Let's Play, so I did the commentary while I was playing the game, so everything you hear is the genuine article. Uh, even when I die and scream into the microphone, those are genuine reactions to me dying several times, especially near the end. I was going to cut some of it out, but I thought uh, it would be much better if I le uh, for the sake of continuity, and I think it's more funny if you actually, uh, it's more organic and genuine if I le leave everything in. So everything you see is the complete Let's Play that I did a few hours ago. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, if there are a few, um, if there are any problems the, uh, of, with audio or video quality, do let me know. Um, I think I've ironed out most of the kinks, but there might be a few I might have overlooked. And of course, any feedback uh, about with the commentary itself or the Let's Play itself, don't hesitate to post them down below and I'll be able to make improvements uh, that you might suggest for later episodes. So, uh, without further ado, I'll let you watch my uh, Let's Play of Super Mario Bros. 1 on the Super Nintendo. Hello folks and welcome back to the Astrogation Videos channel on Blip TV or YouTube depending on where you're watching this and welcome back to the show. Uh, it's another Let's Play uh, folks. I haven't done one of these in a very long time while well, in the fashion that I'm doing it right now. Uh, I've just recently reset up my splitter box and Super Nintendo and all, uh, a couple of my old consoles to do some more Let's Plays and I hope you guys enjoy it. So uh, I know you guys have probably seen Let's Plays like this especially of Super Mario Brothers 1 which I'm going to play in a moment um, but I decided to pick uh, pick this particular game just to serve as like a test really because I don't know what the audio quality is going to be like, I don't know what the picture quality is going to be like and um, so th this is sort of like a test video so um, yeah I hope you guys enjoy it all the same I've got a ton of uh, let's plays I can do, I've got a ton of classic games and a whole and of course I also can do some modern games as well so uh, I'm going to redo a few of my ones that I didn't manage to complete like Mass Effect and uh, a bunch of other stuff like Civilization 5. But uh, in the meantime, um, this is Super Mario Brothers, the Super Nintendo version, as seen on Super Mario All Stars. Uh, this is the uh, special cartridge with uh, Super Mario World on it as well, which is really cool because you don't get Super Mario World on the. Uh, they recently released it on the Wii uh, as well, but that version is basically a very lazy emulation of the original Super Nintendo version. So. I'm playing it the old fashioned way, I'm playing it on the original console it was intended for and I'm playing it with the extra Super Mario World as well. Um, it was alright, um, it plays exactly the same as the Super Nintendo version, the one you see in front of you, all the games do, but uh, you don't get Super Mario World and basically it was a really lazy, it was basically um, packaged for uh, Super Mario's 20th birthday and it wasn't brilliant really. It, it was, they filled it with a bunch, a really lazily put together booklet, uh, which they basically, uh, you know, put together within five minutes, and uh, they just put the uh, original ROM uh, of the original cartridge onto a disc and let it play, which is also another five minute job, so, it was, it was just rushed, they could have really gone to town with it, they could have fixed some of the bugs, they could have, um, uh, also improve the soundtrack that they give you with it. You get a CD with it, the, the Wii version, if you can still get it. But it was basically just a CD of about 20 tracks of sound effects. And it wasn't very good. So, you know, here we go. I'm just, that's why I'm playing the Super Nintendo version. I will try um, to avoid using the Wii version of a Super Nintendo games or, you know, or emulated games in general. If I've got the original, I'll try and play it with the original console if I do have it. Uh, because uh, it's, it, it just adds authenticity to it, I guess. I think I like uh, a bit of authenticity. Um, so yes, uh, this is level 2. Um, I used to play this game an awful long time, and this is one of the first games I come across. Uh, well, one of the first games I was ever given as a, as a child. Uh, I used to play um, this all the time around my aunties, because she had a Super Nintendo back in the early 90s. 
And the and uh, she had quite a few quite a lot of games for it. She had Super Star Wars, Super Mario All Stars, which is the one that came with the Super Nintendo. I still attest that it's, it's still one of the best deals ever released in in gaming because you got well the original Super Mario All Stars. You got Super Mario Brothers One, uh, Super Mario Brothers Two, uh, which is that well which is the um, uh, a repackaging of uh, that Japanese game, I can't remember what it was called. Whoops. <laughs> Just died there. It's quite difficult to talk and play at the same time, but... Uh, well, anyways. Um, which is basically a repackaging of a, uh, a Japanese game, which wasn't originally a Mario game. I'll talk about that a little later on, when I can think of the name. Uh, and there's also the uh, original Super Mario Bros. 2, which is... Um, which was known as the Lost Levels over here in Europe because it was never originally released over here before. Actually, I won't go over to the secrets. I don't want to go over there. There we go. I want to make this Let's Play last as long as possible, and it's and it's easy if you play through the worlds as they are. So I'll I'll, I'll avoid the warps. Uh, so you've got Super Mario, Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 2, which is the Lost Levels, which is extremely hard. I've never completed it to this day. Uh, probably never will really. Um, because it's sheer difficulty. And now we're on to World 3. You also get the, the ever-brilliant Super Mario Bros. 3. And you also get... Uh, what was the fourth one? Oh yeah, I did say all of them. So you get Super Mario Bros. 1, Super Mario Bros. 2, the other Super Mario Bros. 2, and Super Mario Bros. 3. Uh, oh, my personal favourite is probably number 3, because it's the biggest. And... Uh, I think it's really awesome. Uh, Angry Video Game Nerd did, did a review of it uh, a couple of years ago, I think, and it was it was really funny. He, he claims it was possessed by the devil. If you don't watch him, he's really funny. You can check out his videos on game trailers, and you can also get his DVDs, which I also uh, recommend. Oh, I forgot you can't pick up shells in this version. Well, the main difference is um, from the original NES counterparts is basically, as you can see, uh, the Super Mario All-Stars collection was basically, uh, in essence, an upgrade of the NES counterparts or NES originals. They upgraded the graphics to 16-bit graphics and they also improved the soundtrack as well. So it's basically the same, but uh, a lot of the original glitches and stuff have been ironed out uh, and replaced with upgraded graphics and audio. So um, if you can still grab a copy, I think it, uh, the original cartridge anyway, if you can, get the one with Super Mario World as well, because that's added extra value. That cartridge, the one you're seeing in front of you, uh, is still available on eBay, I think, as well. Uh, Super Mario World is also awesome in itself, because you've got Yoshi in it. And Yoshi is an awesome character. Probably my favourite of all the Mario characters. I use him an awful lot in like, games like Mario Party. Right. You can either hit him with fireballs like that and just like knock him out of the way, that's the easiest, or just jump right over him and knock him into the lava, but um, I'm playing, as I'm playing with this Super Nintendo version, my, my, cont my, con my controller, can't speak, my controller isn't exactly the best in the world, it's been well used and like, the D-pad isn't as, like, as, isn't as tight as it used to be, but it um, still works okay, um, can't complain, I think I'm doing okay. So this is World 2-1. Um, I think there are eight worlds on this, if I remember, and like, there's about three or four worlds to each one, and of course it gets progressively uh, harder and harder. Um, when was this released now? The, the, the Super Nintendo version came out w um, when I've, it, it came bundled with a console, so it, it depending on which region you come from. It was, uh, I think it was 1992, I think it was over here, I believe. Uh, 1991 in America, I believe, but I'm not 100% on that, but it was, it was in the early 90s anyway. Anyway, um, as I said, it was. It's one. It's, I still attest. It's one of the best value compilations ever released. With a, ever released, and I'll, uh, not next to the uh, Valve's Orange Box. You got an awful lot of uh, bang for your buck, as the phrase goes. You got a lot of games, and you didn't. It didn't cost you a single penny. Well, the Orange Box did cost money, but you can get that on PC for like fifteen pounds, and you, with that, you get the, like uh, the uh, current Half Life Two games and their little mini episodic series as well along with uh, the ever brilliant um, Team Fortress 2 and um, which is free to play anyway now you can download that for free now on, on uh, Valve's uh, Steam service so um, again uh, feel free to check that out if you wish uh, I will do some more PC Ooh, what am I doing I'm trying to hit that thing what's this 
Um, I'm trying to. I, I will do some more uh, PC games. Uh, so feel free to make any suggestions for any let's plays uh, that you want me to do, uh, because I've got a ton of games to play with. Um, and since I've uh, completed Mass Effect 3, I've got a bit of time to uh, actually build up a stockpile of uh, Let's Plays for you guys to watch. Uh, and, and, and of course, don't don't feel threatened to give me some feedback, because again, this is sort of a, a test run sort of thing. Oh shit, watch out for those squids, I hate those things. Um, let me know what you think about it in general, like, like technical stuff like the video or audio quality is might not be that brilliant. Just let me know and I'll see if I can do any improvements. And, and even if the commentary is not that particularly great, let me know if uh, you want the commentary improving. Like, for instance, like if I'm talking too much or you want me to talk about a particular uh, topic about the game in more detail, like its history or something. Again, let me know and see what you... What you I'll, I'll do what I think is entertaining, or at least I'll do my best. But um, none of my, I, I never never say that my none of my videos are perfect. There's always a few problems I find myself. And But, uh, oh shit... Um, I hate the swimming sections um, because like, the it's it's kind of awkward because like, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not moving at the moment. I'm just tapping the B button and I'm swimming swimming backwards, which is rather irritating. It's re it's kind of it doesn't it's kind of strange when you're playing um, old games like this because Mario moves a little differently compared to like the jumping arc and the running the the, the momentum I should say is different compared to the modern. Uh, side-scrolling Mario games like on the DS and stuff. So yeah, um, as I was saying, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I'll, I'll do like any feedback you give me is appreciated, and I can try and incorporate them. Uh, oh, this is the this is the one with the flying fishes. The best thing to do uh, <laughs> is to just run and run and run. Just keep running. Uh, that way you shouldn't hit anything. Oh! Unless you stop stop for any minute, but I had to to get that mushroom. But yeah, give me any feedback and let me know what you think. Um, this is just the sort of test system. Um, oh, while I'm here, um, I could I suppose I could talk about how I actually do these Let's Plays. I did do a video uh, quite a long time ago. Um, talking about how I actually recorded, uh, the f uh, like how you record the footage and how you do the commentaries and stuff. Um, there's different ways you can do it, of course, and there's different uh, aids and tools that you can use. Uh, uh, the way I use it is the DVD recorder method. I think that's the most um, cost-effective way to do it. The, the DVD recorder and splitter method, where it's... Uh, like for um, consoles that use like you, you know the RCA cables or composite cables, um, uh, you can basically you can plug the console into the DVD recorder, and you record the footage onto a blank DVD-R or DVD-R or whatever you, whatever your recorder is compatible with. Oh damn! It unducked there. My D-pad's knackered. Uh, you plug the yeah, and then you record the footage onto a uh, deep blank DVD and then you rip the DVD and there you are, you've got the footage to use in your editing software. Now of course, uh, I'll talk in a moment, <laughs> so it's a lot more harder than it looks. Uh, one of the tricks you can do, yes, there we go, made it. Run underneath him, but that's quite hard to do, so I only recommend doing it as little Mario when you've got already oh, taken a hit. Um, so yeah, you rip, you rip the footage into your editing software, and then when it's in your, your software, you can do whatever you like with the footage. You can cut it up how you wish, and you can, uh, in, in essence, effectively, uh, do the commentaries in your editing software. Now, it take, well, Let's Plays take practice, because, you know, you've got to make them interesting. And it's entirely up to you how you do your Let's Plays. You, you might just want to focus on a few levels of a game. Or if you if, or you can try and do a complete Let's Play, like do like a standard walkthrough of a game and then do the commentary over on top. It's entirely up to you, but that's how I do it. If you, are, if you guys want me to do like a new tutorial on how to do the DVD recorder method, I'll be more than uh, willing to uh, help you guys out. Because, um, especially since um, let's uh, doing let's play. Oh bloody hell! Uh, let doing let's plays um, was one of the first things I ever did, and I found it very difficult to do because I didn't know how uh, you got you, you got about. Oh shit! The Hammer Brothers. Ah! <laughs> I didn't know how you went about actually gaining the footage because uh, in my early days of making videos, all I used to do. 
uh, was point the camera at the screen. I'm just going to run past them, they're too difficult. Uh, all I used to do was point the camera at the screen and get the footage that way. Um, and, of course, it's not it's not very pro professional. Oh, crikey, I nearly died there. Use the turtle. Kill them. Hopefully there's a mushroom in one of these. Uh, you just point the camera... Oh, I used to point the camera at the television. And the, the effect is terrible. You, you like, it's always at a jaunty angle. And uh, the way... The, because there's, I didn't really know of a really decent way to get the footage into... Uh, some sort of editing software. Um... I had to do the commentary over the fly, like, uh, like as I was playing it, and like now, I'm, as I'm doing the commentary live, it's uh, it's quite diff again, it's a difficult thing to do. Uh, you got to uh, keep the commentary going as long as possible uh, without slurring your words, like I'm doing now and saying um and ah every five, like every five seconds, basically in my case. But then again, uh, you know, uh, you develop your own style, I guess. Uh, you know, you. Uh, you can always ask your fans for feedback and stuff, but also you gotta like, you know, take a balance, uh, a balanced approach. Like you gotta like uh, f create your own style, and um, you get fans. Uh, the, the more you do these let's plays and whatever videos you do, you get a fan base, and you try and expand upon that uh, each time you release a video. So yeah, um, feel free to let me know of what you think of these let's plays. I know they're not perfect, but. Uh, Hopefully they're entertaining. Oh, that's not fair. The star power run out. Again, uh, some of the mechanics are, you know, like, um, which some of the mechanics are changed for later editions of the Mario series. Like, the, the moment, the jumping momentum is a little off, as I was saying. Like, for instance, like you jump on an enemy, um, and in the newer games, you sort of um, go higher each time you land on an enemy, but, on enemy. but this one, it, it doesn't matter how many enemies you jump on in a row, you still only get a little bit of momentum each time. You only get a really tiny amount of, uh, should we say, thrust into the sky. So that, I'm, I'm still um, getting to grips with it again. Right. But at least in uh, this one, Super Mario Bros. 1, the European uh, edition of the game, it's a lot easier compared to Super Mario Super Mario Bros. 2, the lost levels, because that is extremely difficult. Really stingy with power-ups, and you've also got those really evil uh, maze levels as well. Uh, so uh, and, and the warps that take you back several levels as well, so you've got to watch out for those. Um, I'll see how far I can get through this. Um, I think... Um, because uh, this is the Super Nintendo version. I don't think it was possible in the original NES version uh, of the game, uh, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, I don't think it was. I don't think saves were introduced until uh, Super Ma uh, uh, Legend of Zelda, at least in Europe anyway, on the NES. But uh, on Super Nintendo, uh, most games use a sa battery save system, which is handy. Oh, crap. Oh, that's not fair. And also you lose uh, another thing. You also lose two levels of your power up so you don't oh, you don't just lose your fire flower you also lose oh <laughs> you also lose uh you, you your second you like your, your mushroom power up as well in a se in effect ah take your time take your time uh <laughs> really difficult to do this make sure you don't fall in the lava that's always happens to me right right jump over there now get through these I'll explain again in a moment once I've got a little gap there we go nice right for a gap there we go jump through there watch out for those fireballs and that one as well oh, that's evil okay duck jump gotta wait wait for that to move take your time there's no rush uh, at least for a bit, or you can just run at him and just get on this thing here, and there we go, knock him into the lava. Uh, so yeah, uh, as, uh, what was I saying? Uh, it's, it's difficult playing these let doing commentaries and let's plays because uh, it, it, it's like doing two things at once, and I'm not exactly the best at multitasking. You got to make it interesting and think where to place your character and jump each time. So very difficult to do. Um, so yeah, I'm now on 4-1. I'm doing okay, I think. I haven't lost too many lives. Oh, this Lakito bastard. Oh, whatever he's called. I hate him. Uh, see if there's a fire flower in this one. Uh, yes! 
Got lucky there, it was worth it. Oh no, that's not fair. <laughs> oh, oh. As soon as I got it, I got crushed. So, best thing to do again, like with like the Hammer Brothers level or whatever, is just to run right past everything. See if there's anything in here. Just be careful. Right. Okay, get past him. Any mushrooms in here? No. Do get points though, which is cool for a high score. Uh, and also, each time you get 100 coins, you gain extra life, which is essential. You need to get as many coins as you possibly can uh, while playing this. Ah, don't run away from me! There we go. And that doesn't that trick doesn't work either. Like, if there's a Goomer right above you... Oh, that's so not fair. If there's a Goomer above you, you can basically just... Oh, hit the block right underneath them and flip them away. It doesn't work with those. I've only got one life left, I've got to be really careful. Okay. Maybe going through, maybe I should have went through the warp pipe actually, because this will take, the warp pipe basically just takes you straight to the warp pipe. I'm just going to run from here on in because he just stays there. Unless you, unless you stop for a second then he's able to catch you up. Right. Jump, over, jump onto the flag. Excellent stuff, 5,000 points. Um, what else is there to say? Um, I've said uh, let's play. Yeah, let's play is a difficult to do. And again, if you got any, uh, if you want to give you any tips, like to get yourself started, um, do feel free uh, to ask me, and I'll maybe do a few tutorials for you guys. Now, uh, the DVD recorder method, as I was saying, is good uh, for uh, consoles that use the RCA system. You know, like composite with the red, white, and yellow cables. Um, that's the system that most of the m most consoles use. I think all consoles, even the modern ones, still use composite, but they're they're um, becoming less and less common. And um, my flat screen, the one I'm playing this game on, doesn't have RCA at the back, so you have to. Um, but thankfully, I've I've got the I've got a converter, which is basically th it does have a scar at the back, so mean so meaning you can basically plug. Uh, your RCA cables into the SCART block thing, and you can plug it into the direct into the back of your television set if uh, if you've still got them. Uh, these little converter block things come with they come with most consoles, really. Um, I will skip to word well five though. Uh, they come with most consoles, and I think uh, even the modern consoles still they still come with these SCART block things. Um, for, for my television, I have to use it. Um, but for HD uh, consoles, you want to record the footage. Uh, DVD recorder, of course, wouldn't cut it because DVDs are only is an SD format and not a HD format. So as far as I know, I don't think you can't. Um, D uh, Blu-ray recorders are still quite uncommon uh, as of yet. So I don't think you can get a DVD. Uh, like a, sorry, a Blu-ray recorder and record the footage that way because I don't think uh, they're in common uh, circulation as of yet. Oh, that's not fair. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I got past it. Uh, they're not in common circulation, so uh, there are um, ways you, you can record HD uh, footage from your consoles. Of course, if you've got a PC, uh, a decent PC rig and you were recording HD, um, uh, you will need a big massive hard drive and of course I will recommend using a soft, bit of software called Fraps which is brilliant because it's, it's compatible with most modern HD games uh oh I'm screwed now, oof there we go got past him um, it's compatible with most modern games it basically you see like a frame rate counter in the corner of the screen oof see if I can get past him, oh damn anyway he's dead now I've got past him um, you can use fraps for a PC games, but for like consoles like uh, the PlayStation 3, for example, and Xbox 360 and stuff like that, uh, I will recommend something like the HD PVR by Hapark. Uh, it's about £150 or on Amazon, you can get it for about £25 cheaper now, I think. I believe. My brother's got one for his Mac, and it's absolutely fantastic. I used to have one uh, years ago, um, a couple of years ago. But uh, because my P I think I had uh, a fault, my uh, mine was faulty. I had to send it back. But it's brilliant um, because it uses it, it records in full HD. Well, not full HD, 1080i. But uh, your edit most editing software, the good ones anyway, can deinterlace the footage and make it progressive to convert it to 1080p. Uh, so it, it gives really good quality results, and you don't need a particularly high-powered. 
PC to run it. You need uh, a middle of the range PC will suffice, and as long as it's got a D. Uh, um uh, USB 2.0 slots on it. USB 3 even better if you ha if you have got that, uh, which is the new configuration. It will work even better then. But basically, this little box thing, the Haparg box, will um, does all the uh, encoding for you. It does all the recording, and all it does is transfer the streaming footage onto your hard drive. And it ta and um, the quality is really good. It uses the MPEG-4 format. Um, which is uh, compatible, which is a really uh, user-friendly format. It's uh, I like it because it offers a it's 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 a really good codec. It's uh, quite efficient. You get really good quality HD footage at a reasonably low uh, with reasonably low hard drive space. So um, that's why I use an MPEG four for a lot of my videos and releasing them on YouTube because uh, it's, it's it's really easy to use and a lot of software is compatible with it. Um, 